Okay, so today, <coughs> in uh, my last lecture, we will uh, talk about generalized unitarity, but let me review some of the three level uh, information that I discussed and also Shruti discussed that uh, will be useful. So, <coughs> so talking about uh, three level amplitudes, on shell scattering amplitudes, Um, yeah, massless. Uh, these are at three level. These are rational functions. And in the spinner, uh, rational functions of uh, epsilon and p polarization vectors or tensors per case of uh, spin two. And uh, momenta, and we introduce these new variables, lambda, lambda, tilde, spinner helicity. So in the end, it's just a function of lambda, lambda, tilde. Now, uh, one important uh, property of uh, the, the three level amplitudes is the factorization. So the only poles of, uh, okay, call it amplitude AN. Are uh, they are of the form one over p square, where p is the sum of momenta. Not all of them, because it would be zero, but some subset. And this just comes from Feynman propagators, as usual, because you know Feynman propagators are one over p square, <coughs> and the only poles in the three-level amplitude are, are of this form. Yeah, so one over s, one over t, one over u, for case of four point. Now, uh, on these poles. If you go on the pole when you set p squared to zero, the amplitude factorizes. So, so on the pole, so a n goes to some a left, one over p square, a right. Okay, or we can just draw it as. Uh, this endpoint amplitude factorizing into left amplitude and right amplitude with some p, which is that p, and now it's on shell. So p squared is zero. Okay, so that's uh, just a tree level factorization, which was also <coughs> an important input uh, to these uh, BCFW recursion relations. Okay. So three level amplitudes are rational functions with poles and on the poles they factorize into lower point amplitudes which are also rational functions and so on. So in the theories with spin, you also, this internal particle also has helicity. So it has plus minus on one side and <coughs> yeah, you, you saw that in the recursion relation. Okay, so uh, now we turn to loops. So as uh, Lance already mentioned, loop amplitudes are very complicated. So as I said in the beginning, uh, we are working in the perturbation theory here. So the leading term was the three level amplitude, uh, which we can calculate uh, <coughs> with or without problems, depending uh, how hard on and which method we are using, but we are getting some rational function in the end. But uh, for loop amplitudes, these are very complicated functions, transcendental functions and beyond. And uh, uh, we need some organizational principle or some method how to calculate them efficiently. We can still use Feynman diagrams. We can draw loop Feynman diagrams. Uh, for example, for Young Mills theory, for 4.1 loop, we would have diagram like that and many others. And we would have to draw them. We would have to integrate over internal momenta and uh, yeah, get some result. But there is a better way how to organize uh, things. Not that it would help with the actual integration, uh, or not much. The, the integration methods is something that Johannes and will talk uh, about later this week. But it helps to organize uh, the results, so at least reduce uh, the part which is not the loop integral to something simple and very much tree-like. Okay, and uh, so this is under the name generalized unitarity or unitarity methods. Uh, 
Okay, here I would also add, uh, want to add some uh, kind of uh, physical names. So the fact that the only poles are one over p square is just a momentum space realization of the fact that the theories are local. So the locality of the quantum field theory implies that uh, the only poles are one over p square. And uh, the unitarity of the theory uh, implies the factorization on, on these poles. You would like to see now how the unitarity, what it implies at loop level for loop amplitudes. The locality will still basically have the same consequence. So the only poles in the loop amplitudes before you integrate in the loop integrands are one over p square, but p can also be now loop momentum, not only external momenta. Okay, let me do a kind of quick sketch of uh, not really derivation, but motivation of the unitarity cut which will be the, the main uh, tool we will use here and we will generalize it later. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we can uh, now for now consider S as uh, just the full S matrix. Yeah, so, so you know S matrix, uh, uh, so the amplitude is then given <clears throat> by uh, jamming that with the initial and uh, uh, the in and out state. Now, the unitarity of the S matrix that you can read in any quantum field theory is that just S dagger S is one. And we can also write uh, S as one plus I T, where I it corresponds to the forward scattering. And uh, yeah, and then there is the matrix T, which is kind of a correction or the interesting part. So if I plug this expression here and, uh, <clears throat> and the ones cancel on both sides, this one, this unit matrix here and the unit matrix here, I, okay, so if I plug it there, I get one minus I T uh, dagger one plus I T is equal to one. Canceling the ones, I get I T dagger minus T is T dagger T. Okay, now, uh, the, now we would like to interpret the terms on the left and on the right hand side. So on the left hand side, <coughs> this is the, uh, these, T, these T's, as uh, Lance mentioned, don't have, only, don't have poles but have branch cuts, or also have branch cuts. And uh, like logarithms and polylogarithms. So if you do this uh, operation, what you are really calculating is a discontinuity along the branch cut. Okay, so this term corresponds to discontinuity along the branch cut of T. Okay. And uh, the T dagger T, do you see that it's quadratic in T? So this will correspond to some product, yeah? Uh, <clears throat> so this is also imaginary part, as you can see from here, but that indeed corresponds to the discontinuity along the branch cut. And uh, the right-hand side corresponds to some quadratic part, so this will be a product of uh, <clears throat> S matrices or amplitudes. Okay, so this is very general, and because T, we don't know T, and we never will be able to calculate T precisely, <clears throat> but we will want to use this equation in perturbation theory to motivate, uh, to find relations which are true order by order in perturbation theory, because that's the way how we will work. So now, in perturbation theory, and again, this is everything here is very schematic, yeah? Uh, I'm not uh, proving anything, but I, I just want to motivate why <coughs> we finally arrive on, as I said, something called cuts of the amplitudes. So let's just consider here uh, four point scattering, so two to two. So what the T would look like. So I put a label four here, saying that will be four point scattering. So at uh, three level, I'm here drawing Feynman diagrams. Of course, there, at a given loop order, there will be many Feynman diagrams, but uh, I just want to motivate uh, what these things are. So this is a three-level contribution. So we would call it T4, zero, uh, 
called this corresponds to the tree level. It has two powers of G. Each G comes from one vertex. And then I have one loop contribution. Again, ignoring there are more diagrams and S and T channel, uh, U and so on. Yeah, ju just like representatives. So this is one loop contribution, and this will go like G to the four T four, and I put index one here, saying that it is one loop. And then I have two loop. So uh, drawing some two loop diagram. So this is g to the 6, t4, 2, and so on. Okay? So this is just uh, expanding this in the perturbation theory. I'm exactly ignoring the trivial forward piece when these guys don't interact, just two straight lines. Yeah? This corresponds to this. Okay. Now let me do the same thing for 2 to 3. So this will be a five-point scattering. So I have also three level. Uh, the representative diagram here. Now, this is multiplied by G cube, as you can see, because there are three Feynman vertices in the diagram. This is still tree level. And then I have also one loop, so something more complicated. I also draw a box integral. There are many others, of course. Again, this is just representative. And counting the vertices, this one has five. So this will go like g to the fifth, t, five, one, and so on. Okay. Okay, so I expanded t in the perturbation theory here. And I'm basically now just comparing the powers of G on both sides of this equation I drew here. Okay, so <clears throat> the, just formally writing the discontinuity across the branch cut of the four point amplitude, this is the thing on the uh, left hand side, I can just write as G square times discontinuity of T4 naught plus g to the 4 times discontinuity of t4, 1, plus g to the 6 discontinuity across the branch cut of t4, 2, and so on. I basically just took this expansion for t4 and I did it word discontinuity in front of it. Yeah. So this is the left-hand side. Now, <clears throat> the right-hand side is more interesting because it's a product. And... Uh, what type of product it can be, okay? So I can take a product of two four-point amplitudes, four and four, okay, with uh, these internal lines identified. I can also take a product of five-point amplitudes with the same external, so these guys are fixed, these external are fixed, and I'm just adding the stuff on the internal. So it would look like that. Okay, and more. I can have uh, more amplitude, not, six, po six point and higher. Okay, and now I just uh, I just uh, expand these guys again in perturbation theory using the same formula there, and these five point also in perturbation theory using that. Okay, so I get products of amplitudes in perturbation theory, or these t t. Uh, functions which are <coughs> which are uh, uh, basically scattering amplitudes okay so what happens here so i have g square uh, t4 not plus g to the 4 t4 1 and so on i have the same thing here also g square t4 not plus g to the 4 T4, 1, and so on. And here, I have also this expansion, but now this is direct, uh, this is immediately higher power in G. Yeah? So it is clear that when I compare the left and right hand side, I will take higher terms in perturbation theory from here than from here, because this is just weighted with higher power of G already, even at tree level. Okay. 
and so on. So I'm just writing here relevant terms. So then if I put everything together, the leading term is g to the 4, taking the leading terms for both four-point amplitudes. So this will just look like this. 4 here. And 4 here. Then the next term is g to the 6. This is 1g square from here, 1g to the 4 from here, and then from both sides, or g cube here and g cube here. So, so the terms I get are, uh, yeah, so, so, so here I denote that this is 0. This is, was the 0th order amplitude. Now this is, uh, in the perturbation theory, this is 1. So as you can Maybe you can guess this will be three, this is three level, this is one loop, this is three level, but also I have uh, the opposite, this three level, this one loop. But I also have also the contribution of these five point. So these are only three level contributions. And so on and higher terms in G. Okay? So, so I have everything I need. So I have left-hand side and right-hand side. I can just compare the powers of G. Any questions here before we do it? Okay, so this is very easy. So, uh, <clears throat> so the first term is comparing g square because that's what's the leading term on the left-hand side. So the discontinuity of, of t4, zero. But what is the, what is the term on the right-hand side with g square? There is none, yeah? So this is zero. Okay, that already makes sense because t4 naught is a three-level amplitude and it's a rational function. It doesn't have any logs, so th there is no discontinuity. There is no branch cut here. So the discontinuity is obviously zero. Now, if I do the next term, t4 one, this is the g to the four. So, What I get uh, from that picture, so now I just connect these internal lines <coughs> because indeed they are identified. So I get a product of two uh, three-level amplitudes. So this is three, but that they are closed in a loop, okay? But uh, <coughs> yeah, and then I continue, so the discontinuity at two loop, is a product of one loop with three. Then three with one loop and two trees with uh, more internal X. Okay, all right, now uh, we take, uh, okay, so this makes sense diagrammatically, but it is very hard to put some formulas behind it because these T functions are, yeah, some, uh, some complicated uh, transcendental functions with branch cuts and we have to calculate these continuities. So we will take this as a motivation, these relations, and we would like to apply them to a simpler problem, okay? and. Uh, the change that we will do now is not to consider the amplitude, but the integrand of the amplitude. Okay, so from amplitude to integrand.
what I mean by that. So normally, uh, you have uh, the scattering amplitude, for example, the one loop amplitude. So what you have to do is to do some integration of a rational function. Okay, so uh, this rational function, you can think about it as collection of Feynman diagrams before you integrate them. You should integrate each of them at one loop. Okay, and uh, so this part is called integrand. There is a lot of things to say about integrand and what is the role in the planar limit and some special variables and so on. But yeah, I will not do that here. I will just keep the general broad discussion here. All right, so, uh, and if you have two loop, you have, of course, uh, two integrations to be done. Now, of, these integrations are subtle, so I'm writing he uh, here D4L, but, as Lance already mentioned, things are IR divergent, you have to regulate it, maybe you don't want to do it in four dimensions, but shift the dimension and so on. But, uh, okay, yeah, I'm not doing these integrations here. So, <clears throat> what I want to do is to apply these formulas, talking about discontinuities uh, along branch cuts of amplitudes, to integrands. Yeah? And integrands are rational functions. So, they are not trees, but they are like trees. Yeah? They are more complicated, they depend on loop momenta, but they, in many respects, they are like trees especially because they are rational functions. And uh, what we would like to do is to derive and use the analog of the factorization of the tree-level amplitudes now to these integrands. Okay? And uh, that will lead us to the... Uh, <coughs> uh, to cuts. Okay, so uh, let me just say uh, what it is here. Uh, so the relation is following. So the discontinuity this. along branch cuts of, let's say, some function like log s over t, because this is typically what happens, and much worse, of course. Uh, well, so taking the discontinuity along uh, the branch cuts of the amplitude corresponds to taking a cut of the integrand. So cut in integrand. I L. Okay, I'm not specifying the loop order here. <clears throat> and what is the cut? The cut is just taking uh, uh, the residue on the poles in I. So the I, as I said, is a tree-level object. It can be derived from Feynman diagrams. So it has the same type of poles as the tree-level amplitude. Yeah? So the integrand has poles, which are 1 over P square, where P can also... In, in addition to the external momenta, can also include uh, loop momenta. Okay, so it can be, for example, just one over L square, where L is the loop momentum. And the cut means sending uh, these uh, terms to zero, these propagators to zero, which involve loop momentum. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the cut. So the cut, is uh, sending uh, set these propagators to zero. So P, which depends on L square, is zero. Okay? Is it clear what the cut is? It's the same thing that we do at tree level. We set the propagators to zero, the tree level amplitude factorizes. Now at loop level, uh, we ha I haven't said what the amplitude does, but the operation is again sending the propagator to zero, but now involving L. Okay.
Okay. <clears throat> well, and it's basically what it does is what we saw in these pictures here above for the full amplitudes, but now doing it for the integrand, it would make uh, <clears throat> uh, the pictures will be the same. Uh, and it will have also very simple uh, meaning. How to see what? Uh, well, uh, you can. Uh, <clears throat> well, one thing you can do is to do the cut of. Okay, in, uh, let me say that in general, for general integral, the map is unclear, or at least to my knowledge. Yeah, like it's not a mathematical statement. But in particular integrals, you can do the cut and you can do the remaining integral in the remaining variables. And uh, yeah, and then you can see if it is equal uh, to the discontinuity on the other side. But uh, <clears throat> the other way how to see it is that uh, you can ask like where is the loop momentum space, like these discontinuities are located, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, it, it is, uh, okay, maybe, I, I guess uh, Lenz would be the biggest expert to answer that question, but to my knowledge, it is not a well-established thing. It's not a mathematical statement for sure, but uh, it is something uh, that works, and uh, at least uh, the, the, the rules that you derive from that, for the cuts that I, that I will now show, these are correct. So this is a motivation where these rules come from, yeah. Or one of the motivations. I'm sure there are also other like ways how to arrive at them. <clears throat> so um, okay. So what are uh, so what are the uh, so the basic uh, the, the basic formula we will here use is uh, the unitarity cut. which is exactly this application of uh, <clears throat> uh, this expansion on the integrand. So what we consider is a one-loop integrand and uh, we will send two propagators to zero. So these lines are on shell So this is, let's say, some loop momentum L, and uh, yeah, and this is some loop momentum L plus Q, where Q is the sum of uh, these momenta. Okay, and what I'm doing is sending L square and L plus Q square to zero. And taking the residue of the one loop integrand on this cut, so again, this is called unitarity cut, we get a product of two tree level amplitudes, which also depend on this L and L plus Q so they depend on L, but know that the L is on shell momentum now, not off shell. It's not anymore the off shell loop momentum. And in addition, there is one more condition imposed on it. Yeah, so it has only two degrees of freedom. Yeah, it started as four, we impose two conditions, it ends as two. Okay, so write it in some formula, cut of one loop is equal to a product of two trees. which depend also on L and L plus Q. And other external momenta. These external momenta are the same as here. Okay? Is it clear, uh, this formula? Now, the one-loop integrand has many of these cuts because you have to decide which pair of propagators you are cutting. So you are dividing the external momenta in two sets. 
Yeah, and there, there are just many ways how to do it. But on each of them, the one loop integrand must factorize into two tree level amplitudes. Okay, uh, now, uh, so what we here take for granted is that we can calculate these tree level amplitudes. Yeah, this is our input. Yeah, so for example, using uh, the recursion relations or some other methods, uh, but tree level, the input into these calculations is the tree level amplitude or any tree level amplitude that we might need. <clears throat> and the thing that we would like to do is to calculate this one loop integrand. Okay. Now, before we do it, uh, let me uh, uh, generalize this expression. Yeah? In uh, for the case when we don't only cut one propag two propagators, but more. In four dimensions, we can cut at, at most four, because there are four degrees of freedom in L. Uh, yes, question. Yeah. Integral, yeah. So here in this cut, so integral, okay, in the original S matrix level. Yeah, so we should sum over these leg. Yeah, this is like internal, like it's like a, in like in quantum mechanics when you put, yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but we don't want to use that formula because as I said these things are just too complicated and yeah, we would like to, this was a motivation to arrive at this expression. I could start with this expression, but uh, it's nice to just see it, how uh, you can motivate it from uh, the original S dagger S is one. So uh, if we know all the tree level amplitudes, uh, then we can calculate these cuts. Yeah, so input and output here are cuts because they are just products of the tree level amplitudes. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, A is, yeah, sorry, yeah. Well, I will probably just use I now for just the integrand, yeah, because we will never really, yeah, calculate, yeah. But okay, let, let me be more precise. It's the I, yeah. Okay, good, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so in order, and uh, the output would be calculate cuts, and from that we would like to determine the integrand. This, uh, the cuts will uh, lead us to a particular representation of the integrand, which, uh, which is very natural from this point of view. But before we can do it, we have to calculate more cuts than just this unitarity cut. Yeah? And uh, so now, so this is uh, what we want to do. Yeah, so this is our goal. So, uh, uh, so the next thing that we can uh, do is to cut uh, more propagators and see if you don't cut two but three, what happens on the right hand side? What would be the residue and what type of tree level objects we get? Now, let me make one comment. One can ask, why did I have to cut two propagators? Maybe it was enough just to cut one and I would be already getting a tree level amplitude on the right hand side. This is true in some cases, but in most theories, the single cut of the amplitude <coughs> doesn't correspond uh, to a tree. Yeah, naively, uh, yeah, so this is just a comment. This is not that it is used traditionally in these unitarity methods, but uh, for some special cases, n equals four super young mills, uh, and perhaps a few more cases, the single cut, uh, can be calculated as a tree object. The single cut means that you are only are sending one propagator to zero. And uh, naively, if you just do this diagrammatics, it will look like that from one loop, the single cut you are getting a tree when you are closing 
which has two more external legs, L and uh, minus L, and they are closed into a loop. Does that picture make sense? You take a three-level amplitude, you, it has two more legs, you say that one leg is L, the other one is minus L, which means effectively they are closed into a loop where L squared is zero. So it's on shell. So this is an on shell object. Okay. However, while this object, the cut, always makes sense, the right hand object as a tree in most theories is divergent. So the result of a single cut is not this object, yeah, because that one is infinity. In some special cases, this thing is finite, and it is indeed a single cut of the one loop integrand. Was a question? Ah, sorry, I forgot somebody. Okay, so let me just make a one. This works in uh, special theories, but not in general. However, the statement about the double cut, about the unitarity cut, is a general statement in any, in any quantum field theory. Weakly coupled, of course. Are so, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, in, no, no, in general, yeah, in, in general there is a problem. In general it's divergent. Yeah. yeah. No, no, the single cut is fine. The single cut you can calculate, but it, the question is what is it equal to? And it is equal to the, okay, so maybe I should put some name. This is a forward, also called forward limit of a tree level amplitude. And that is, is in general divergent. If you do it like in Young Mills, you get infinity. Uh, but if you do it in some special theories, and I guess the only example is n equals four super young males, it also seems to be true in n equals eight supergravity. The maximum supersymmetry allows you to cancel the divergencies in summing over the multiplet, and then it's uniquely defined. But in any other theory, it's it's divergent. So, but the single cut exists; it's just not equal to that. In a case it's divergent, but it's not clear if it is equal to in the cases it's divergent. Yeah, you would have to regulate it, but then it depends on the regulator. But the single cut of an integrand is perfectly well-defined object. Yeah. It's just not equal to a tree or any modification of a tree, or doesn't seem to be. Yeah. No, it is related to that. Yeah. No, it, it is related to that. Yeah, it is definitely related to that. So you have to find some recipe, some prescription, how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so this was just a side comment because one might argue, why did I consider a double cut if I could just cut one thing? Because cutting one propagator makes L on shell, so I can now try to try to find some on-shell objects on the right-hand side of this right cut equation, but it is in general not possible. So the basic building block here is the unitarity cut. Okay, so I cannot cut less, but I can cut more. Oh, poop. There is definitely nothing prevents me from cutting more propagators, because cutting two already gives me product of two trees, so cutting more will be just factorize these trees. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next thing I can do is cut three. So I stick here for four in four dimensions. So I am limited by cutting at most four propagators because L has four degrees of freedom, and each cut imposes one condition on L. So I cannot impose more than four conditions. So <clears throat> the next thing is a triple cut, cutting three propagators. And <clears throat> okay, let me start again with the double cut. Was cutting two. And now I would like to cut one more, but you see these three level amplitudes still depend on L, right? So let's say this was L, this was L plus Q. Let me call it Q1 now. This is a sum of these momenta. And I would like to cut one more propagator, which means factorizing one of these three amplitudes. Because they do depend on L, I can sit on a pole of a tree level amplitude, here or here, which has L-dependent pole. 
okay? So cutting more would just factorize one of these three-level amplitudes, and it would just break it into two trees again. So the final picture, which I have, looks like that. Okay? Yeah, I can now forgot that I went through this intermediate step and directly jump here. Yeah, so if I have, let's say, propagator AL here, the sum of external momenta here is Q1, sum of external momenta here is Q2, so this propagator is L, L plus Q1, and this one is L plus Q1 plus Q2. Okay, then the cut of the one loop integrand on uh, propagators where L square is zero, L plus Q1 is zero, L plus Q1 square is zero, L plus Q1 plus Q2 square is zero, is this picture, okay, I draw it again, and this is a product of three three-level amplitudes. So this is equal to three level times three level times three level. With uh, all the legs are on shell in this picture, these guys are on shell, these guys are on shell. These are just three level amplitude with the legs that you can see in the picture. Okay, yes, question. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, okay, I should maybe, let me call that Q. Yeah, because Q now splits into Q1 and Q2. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so here, Q. Yeah, so uh, this, uh, you can just, you can just take that the triple cut of a one loop is a product of three trees with particular labels. This was just a derivation because once we know the unitarity cut, any other cut is just simple factorization of the trees in that corner, yeah, and just interpreting the final picture. Okay, so having the triple cut, we can do the final cut. So now that uh, the triple cut imposes three conditions on L, so this expression will still depend on one more parameter other than the external momenta, yeah? The L has one more degree of freedom, yeah? So I can call it Z, and it will depend on Z in addition to P1 up to Pn. But uh, finally, I can also cut all propagators, or four of them. So this is called a quadruple cut. Or more generally, this is a maximal cut. because I just cut everything I can. And in that sense, in four dimension, it is four propagators being sent to zero. I can do this iterative process from the unitarity cut, factorizing <coughs> both sides of the equation on, or factorizing one of the sides twice, doesn't matter. And uh, I'm arriving at the following formula, so the quadruple cut of a one loop integrand will be now product of four three-level amplitudes. So now let me also label it. So this is L, Q1. This is L plus Q1, the momentum flowing here. This is Q2, L plus Q1 plus Q2. Now I do a tiny trick. This is Q3 and this is Q4. But because of momentum conservation, the sum of these Qs is zero. So I can also write this propagator as L minus Q4, just to save a little space. It's also L plus Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 at the same time. Okay, so here in this case, all these internal lines are on shell. So I'm imposing four conditions on L. So the L is completely specified. Okay, so L is equal on this cut to some L uh, star, which only depends on lambda and lambda tilde of all external particles. There is no more degree freedom left in L. It started as four, 
now it has zero. Okay, and this is also, a, as you can see from the picture, this is a product of four three-level amplitudes. Okay, I'm just writing it very schematically. I will have to label it and yeah, say what are exactly the labels. But it is clear from the picture what the labels are. Okay, any questions here? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so the integrand has many cuts. It has already quite a number of double cuts and it has even more triple cuts and quadruple cuts. No, it's not a sum. You have to choose which one you do. Yeah, you just choose. I want to do this cut. And the cut is specified by giving the list of propagators you are sending to zero. Okay? And yeah, and the integrand has many of them. Yeah? And okay, I am here neglecting some things because if there are helicities, you have to put helicities on internal lines and, and so on. So, uh, and then there might be more options how to label helicity, so you, you actually have to sum over all possibilities. Yeah. So, so these pictures, when I draw one picture, in fact, it is often a sum of things, not just one thing, because there are some internal degrees of freedom that you have to sum over all possibilities, like all assignments of helicities plus minus of these internal lines. Yeah. The externals are fixed because that's your input. I would like to calculate that amplitude, but the internal helicities are not. So we have to sum over all options that are consistent. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can, also, you can also choose a pole which doesn't involve L, and then you just factor out three from that. Yeah, yeah. But this is not probing L. Yeah, it is still leaving two degrees of freedom in L. Yeah, so you can definitely do it, and these poles are there, but they are just like, it's just like a three-level addition of this. Yeah, so I, I just showed here the ones that depend on L because they are new from that point of view. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah, very good question. Yeah, question. Yeah, very good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will see it now explicitly. Yeah. So L, L. If you want to integrate over L, you integrate over real L. Now we are doing a different thing. We are not integrating over L. We are taking cuts in L. Yeah. So we are, we are. You can think about it as an integration, but on a different contour, which encircles the poles. And now, indeed, uh, not here yet. But once you go farther in the cuts, the only solutions for L are complex. So the cuts are located in a complex plane, not in a real plane. They are not, they are not located. This, especially, uh, you can think about it here, because here L is completely specified, so it's a single point in the loop momentum space, and it is complex. Yeah. So, uh, right, yeah, so it is complex. So when you integrate, that point is not your, in your integration domain. If it was, it would be a bigger problem. You would have some massive divergences then. But they are not there. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah, but you will see. Yeah, it is not uh, the solution, the, 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 you still, uh, these, you can think about these equations also as complex equations from that point of view. Yeah, so you will have four complex equations. Yeah, but you are not thinking about real complex uh, here. Yeah, you just have degrees of freedom. Yeah, it's four complex equations if you phrase the question like that. Yeah, but uh, what we will do is to so solve for L, or what you solve for L is in terms of external momenta. So what is real and complex really depends if you're, yeah. Uh, if you, what are your external momenta? But uh, when you find a solution for L, it's in terms of, let's say, lambda, lambda, tilde of external, uh, of external kinematics. And from that point of view, you have four degrees of freedom for four, four uh, and four equations. And you can think about them as four complex equations. Okay, very good. Uh, more questions? Okay, so now, uh, so we now have to do in <laughs> remaining time, two things, so we, I will show you an example of the cut, 
And then I will say what to do with these cuts, because so far it looks like I have an integrand and I decide to calculate cuts, which is perfectly fine, but this is not, uh, okay, it's perfectly fine, but it's not a, <clears throat> we would like to do something more. We would like to, from the knowledge of the cuts, to construct the integrand, because that's the hard part. Yeah, if you already know the integrand, then it's just taking residues, okay, and you should check that it's a product of trees, and that's fine, and it will work. But uh, we would like to do the, the opposite. We know what the trees are. I said here, this is our input. So suppose that you know all the trees. Then you can calculate all the cuts. Now, from the knowledge of the cuts, can you reconstruct back the integrand? That's the question that you would like to answer. But uh, maybe just to make uh, these formulas a little more explicit, let me uh, just uh, solve. Uh, okay, this is, this is too loud. Uh, solve for some simple cuts, just to see what these formulas are. Or how, how would you actually solve in practice? So. This is a little bit more special cases, because in general, yeah, you have to solve at one loop, four equations for these four variables, and they are quadratic equations because they are L plus Q square. So you are solving four quadratic equations. And uh, yeah, of course, you get some square roots and uh, some complicated solutions. But uh, <clears throat> uh, for some simple cases, one can basically do it by hand and get something nice. Yeah, so let me uh, show one particular case for the four-point amplitude, so this will be an example. How to calculate the cut. And <clears throat> it will also make sense, uh, it will nicely connect uh, to these uh, three-point discussions that we had uh, last time. Okay, <clears throat> so let's consider here a one-loop integrand uh, for in Young Mills theory with these helicities, one minus, two minus, three plus, four plus. So this is a <coughs> four point amplitude. At one loop now, yeah, so not at three level as we had before. Now, if you calculate a quadruple cut, if you send four propagators to zero, uh, this is one particular cut that the full thing factorizes into a product of uh, three-point amplitudes. Yeah? This is just the special version of uh, the picture I had there above, over there. <clears throat> now, we know something special of three-point amplitudes. We discussed them before. So... Now, there are, uh, uh, so there are only two three-point amplitudes that can be here in this picture. There can be one which has two minuses and one plus, or two pluses and one minus. Okay, so we have to assign what are the helicities of the internal line here, or all of all internal lines. And the only things which are in the corners must be one of these two amplitudes, because the one with minus, 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 and plus, plus, plus is zero. Okay, so let's just uh, do one of them. So I have to start somewhere assigning helicities. Okay, so let me start here saying that this is minus. Okay, if this is minus, there are two minuses, so here there must be plus. If there is plus here on one end, there must be minus on the other end because one is kind of incoming here, the other one is incoming here. And I also have to assign here plus. There are already two pluses here, so I have to assign minus here, which means assigning plus here. And there are two pluses here, so assign minus here, and that leaves me with plus here. Okay, so I get one assignment possible. Does that make sense? Well, the other option was when I started with the opposite, sign in the beginning, when this here it was plus, so here it was minus, 
And here, then I would have uh, more options here. So here I can put plus or minus. So let's put here plus. Then there would be minus here, and there would be plus and minus. And I would also have to choose options here. Yeah? But let me first calculate, so there are more options here, how to do the assignment. But you see that if I started with minus here, there was only one option. So let me stick with this diagram and calculate it. OK. And uh, <clears throat> now to set up some notation, so if we have one minus and two pluses, I, put, uh, I draw this vertex as uh, empty or white. And if it has uh, uh, two minuses and one plus, I uh, draw it as uh, black. So sorry. Uh, okay, good. Okay, so actually, all right. So uh, here. I got one assignment. OK, so, so, so I didn't realize that the assignment which doesn't work. So uh, this is the assignment of helicities. Then you can see uh, that you have two vertices of one color on one side and two vertices on the other color on the other side. OK? Now, uh, which we will see just in a second is that this assignment of uh, helicities and this assignment of three-point amplitudes uh, imposes constraint on external kinematics. Because uh, <clears throat> these three level, these three point amplitudes are the ones with two minuses and one plus. This is also with two minuses and one plus. And for these amplitudes, the lambda tildes are proportional in a vertex. Which means that in this picture, the lambda tilde of particle one and lambda tilde of particle two are proportional. Yeah? So this imposes condition on external kinematics. And this imposes condition of external kinematics. So in this picture, we didn't really solve, we didn't really solve four uh, equations for four variables. But we imposed a condition on lambda tilde 1 and lambda tilde 2 and lambda 3 and lambda 4. Okay? So this assignment of helicities leads us uh, to something which is not a proper quadruple cut. OK, so uh, okay, I wanted to do this example in the end, but <laughs> it happened to be that it's already here. All right, so uh, let me show an example of assignment of helicities of the internal, which is actually consistent with the quadruple cut. And it's the one which does not impose any condition on external kinematics. And then that one, the four, the, the four conditions really corresponds to the uh, four conditions on L. So if I do this assignment, okay. Okay, so. Uh, Again, I am allowed to do all assignments as long as I have only the one of these two three-point amplitudes in a vertex, because the one with minus, 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 and plus, plus, plus is absent in young mills theory, so I wouldn't have it. So this is one solution of the quadruple cut. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's a product of three-point amplitudes in these corners. I can, uh, uh, because of lack of time, I will not be able to solve explicitly uh, for, the, uh, for the internal momenta, in order to take the product of these three-point amplitudes, you need to solve for the internal momenta, let me call them P1, P2, P3, and P4, because they are arguments of the three-point amplitudes in a vertex. Yeah? So the prescription here is that you need to first solve for all L, for all these lines. These are on shell, but you have to solve for them, because they will be the, the X, uh, they will be the, uh, the external momenta of these three-point amplitudes in the corners. Does that make sense? So the procedure is take the cut, solve the equation, cut equations, calculate L for all these legs, 
Once you have it, you can take the product of uh, the three level amplitudes in a vertex. Here, three point amplitudes in this case. Okay? And uh, once we have three point amplitudes in a vertex, something very special happens because uh, we know that for the three point amplitudes, uh, for three point kinematics imposes these massive constraints on all the legs. So in case of this amplitude, all the lambda tildes are proportional. In case of this amplitude, three point, all the lambdas are proportional. Which, for example, tells us that if I look at momentum P1, I should be able to solve for that momentum in terms of all other momenta. I immediately get a, a, a condition on what is the lambda and lambda tilde part of P1, just from knowing that P1 meets with 4 in the, uh, in the white vertex. So this is the white vertex. And it meets with 1 in the black vertex. So from that, I already know that P1 must have lambda 4 and lambda 1 tilde. And the only thing left is that some overall constant. OK, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm using the conditions on three-point kinematics from each of these vertices. P1 meets with 1 in this vertex and with 4 in this vertex. So it already almost fixes completely the form of P1. Yes? Uh, OK, sorry. Uh, minus, minus. Uh, maybe. Ah, maybe here, uh, sorry, what did I flip? I, I Maybe I should have flipped uh, this, right? Yeah, I just sh should flip the overall uh, thing. Uh, minus, minus, this is black, plus, uh, minus, this is uh, white, plus, minus, minus, black. Ah, okay, so it was just this one which was flipped. Yeah, okay, the rest is fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, it's important that here the white vertices and black vertices are not adjacent because as if they are adjacent, using this logic, the one is proportional to the lambda tilde one is proportional to the lambda tilde of that leg, and that is proportional to the lambda two tilde. So the lambda one tilde and lambda two tilde are in this uh, using these conditions proportional to each other, which now imposes condition on external kinematics, not only on L, but also on P1 and P2. And that's not what we want. That's not then a cut of amplitude. OK, so uh, let, I will not finish uh, this exercise here, but you can see that uh, because of uh, the strength of this condition from the uh, three-point kinematics, we are able to basically almost solve for P1, and we can do the same thing for P2, P3, and P4. And then from momentum conservation, knowing that P1 and P2 and particle and P, uh, this P1, P2, and the momentum of particle 1 together must sum to 0 because there is a momentum conservation in each vertex. From that, we can solve, finally, for also alpha and all other, uh, all other parameters. Yeah. So for example, uh, <clears throat> once, uh, uh, yeah, once you do it here, then the solution for P1 that you get, so P is, is 1, 2, 2, 4, lambda 4, lambda 1 tilde. Yeah, so this, this is the factor alpha. Once you consider the momenta, momentum conservation in each vertex after solving in the same way for P2, P3, and P4, you can solve for all the Ps. Yeah, this is a solution for P1. Same thing for P2, P3, and P4. OK, any questions here? So this is a special case when we can basically just on fingers to write the solution. In general, we have to, do, uh, we have to solve these quadratic equations for L. Yeah. Here, the quadratic equations factorized into linear equations exactly because of the three-point kinematics in these vertices. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm already over time, so let me just uh, here outline what, uh, uh, how we can use these cuts just in the one-loop example, and uh, then there is a multi-loop extension uh, when... Uh, uh, 
you can basically use this unit entirety cut also on higher loop amplitudes because then uh, uh, here the one loop amplitude factorizes in three and three at two loops the two loop amplitude would factorize into one loop and three it always decreases the loop order by one yeah so then you can continue using the unitarity cut and factorize more and more loops until you hit the trees. Yeah? So you start to get just bigger, bigger pictures. So at one loop, the way how to use these cuts is to take the amplitude and expand it in a basis. Yeah? So instead of Feynman diagrams, we use a basis of integrals. The integrals that can show up at one loop are box integrals with some coefficients, then uh, triangle integrals with some coefficients, bubble integrals with some coefficients. And then there are also tadpole integrals and uh, rational terms. The tadpole integrals for the massless particles, they integrate to zero in dimensional regularization. And the rational terms is something which is not fixed by cuts. So it's some extra information that you need. But you can fix this part of the one loop amplitude from cuts. And uh, the way how to do it is simple, or the general way. There are also kind of <coughs> smarter, uh, <coughs> smarter version of that. But the very generic way is to do a quadruple cut on the left-hand side, which is a product of trees, okay? So you do cut on left-hand side of AN, and you start from quadruple. The only term on the right-hand side which contributes is one box integral, yeah? Because the, the only one box integral has four propagators that you are cutting, yeah? The triangle has three, the bubble has two, so they are zero on a cut when you got four. And the other box integrals, because there are many of them, just don't have the right sequence of propagators. Only one of them has the right sequence that you are choosing. Does that make sense, this thing? So on the quadruple cut, only one bub uh, only one box integral contributes and you just calculate CI. Yeah, you match the left and right hand side. On the left hand side, it's a product of trees. On the right hand side, you are just taking a residue of some scalar integral. And you calculate the coefficient. Now you do it for all boxes, for all quadruple cuts. Once you have boxes, you do a triple cut. Now the triple cut uh, has support on one of the triangles and many of the boxes but you already calculate coefficients of all boxes. So that allows you to calculate the coefficient of a triangle. Now you do it for all triangles. The next thing is to calculate a double cut, the unitarity cut. That has contribution for one of the bubbles and many triangles and many boxes, but you already calculate all these coefficients already. So again, it allows you to target the coefficient of the last bubble, okay? So in this uh, iterative, uh, iterative procedure, you calculate all the, all the coefficients apart from the things which are not calculable using cuts, and uh, you have to calculate it using other methods, but you already calculated most of the results for the one loop amplitude. And let me say a final word. So this generalizes also to higher loops, uh, these generalized unitarity. When what I said, uh, what I said uh, is that you use, uh, okay, so it will be kind of a side comment here already. At higher loops, the cut part is similar. So uh, you, you have to cut all loops in your higher loop amplitude. And you, for example, get uh, pictures like that. So this is a cut of a two loop amplitude. When you set seven propagators to zero, it's a product of trees again, okay? And you do the same thing uh, for using these cuts to calculate the integrand. You have to write a basis, you have to do the cuts on the left-hand side, and you calculate the coefficients on the right-hand side. However, for higher loops, you typically don't have such a luxury that you can calculate a cut and directly calculate the coefficients from one cut. So you have to write set of cuts, 
and they all target many different integrals. So you had a huge system of linear equations, and you have to solve them. You have to cut enough number of times or enough cuts such that you solve for all equations for coefficients on the right-hand side of these higher loop amplitudes. Okay? For one loop, it's special. You can do it one by one. For higher loops, you have to solve systems of equations for these coefficients. But the logic for cuts is similar. Here, you get products of trees. That's your input. And uh, the output is the integrand. And then the, the hard part starts with doing the integrals. But that's, that is, uh, that's extra. That's not what is uh, done here. OK, uh, thank you. I'm sorry for the <laughs> being over time. I think we can still take some questions. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, everything was clear. Was we already have coffee, I guess. In the back. Okay. So in the TT dagger, or, or the T dagger T, uh, does the dagger not do anything? Because it just sort of seems like you're taking two T's that you're gluing together somehow. Uh, yeah, well, it is, uh, uh, it is a complex conjugation, yeah? So it is kind of the incoming outgoing part of the particles, yeah, the, 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 the way how you think about it, because there is a particle P and minus P. So I guess, yeah, it is a little hard to say what it, what it does at the level of integrand, because in, in the integrand level, you have closed them in the loops. But I think uh, how you can interpret it is that, like, the particle goes in and uh, on one side of the thing goes in and in the other side goes out. So, uh, yeah, I would interpret it like that, yeah. Then uh, interpret it at the level of unity at what it came, where it came from, yeah. Okay, more questions? Ah, here is. Oh, sorry. Um, I was wondering at which stage you use that our amplitudes have to be, or I incoming particles have to be massless, because, okay, only if they are massless, we uh, use mm -hmm. the phenolicity, but, and the example, of course, but from the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, nowhere, really. Yeah, so the generalized unitarity works for massive particles as well. Uh, the integrals are harder than solving the cut equations is harder, but uh, yeah, it does work, work for massive particles as well. Yeah, for, uh, there are no simple examples like that, that there because there is no spinner helicity, there is nothing so special about three point amplitudes. Yeah, but the logic of doing cuts and then using the cuts as products of trees as an information to calculate loops works for massive as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no abstraction in that. Okay. And if you allow also for a second question, um, in this example, we excluded the left thing yeah. because we had to ex uh, um, impose some special kinematics, right? Yeah. Now, if we want to compute, say, a cross-section or whatever, can it happen that we accidentally hit this special kinematics constraint? Such that we have to consider also this diagram. Uh, no, no. Uh, here, uh, here it was like a little bit different, yeah. Because uh, this picture uh, looked like a quadruple cut, right? Yeah. Cutting four propagators. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, this is true. We are imposing four constraints, but it is not a priori clear how did we distribute the constraints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this picture, what we really do is to uh, to impose three constraints on L and one constraint on external kinematics, and it makes four in total. Ah, okay. Yeah. So we just have to be uh, careful when we draw these diagrams, which are products of trees, if we really impose the right number of constraints mm -hmm. on loop momenta, which means that we shouldn't impose any constraints on external kinematics. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here it was related to the assignment of helicities. Yeah, because the assignment of helicities was crucial for saying which, which three-point amplitudes we had. And then it told us about uh, relations between momenta, and we didn't want to get any relation between external momenta because that soaks up one of the conditions that we wanted to store in L. Yeah, we would like to impose everything on L. Okay. Yeah, but uh, because if we have this diagram, this is like an S-channel because S12 is zero here on one loop amplitude. 
but with one loop moment, one degree in L, one parameter in loop momenta being untouched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it will be function on S is zero, which depends on extra Z because we haven't quite fixed L completely. Okay. Yeah. So we would have to integrate it out probably or yeah. whatever. Yeah, and it is on the special kinematics. So if you were interested on amplitude on the special kinematics on the S channel, this would contribute, of course. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much. Um, hi. Yeah. Why in the TT bar product you can have intermediate states with only one particle? In no, we had most. So we had this five point, right? Then we had like multiple particles. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you started at four points, but when you take the product, you could have uh, a product of three point amplitudes. So, I mean, having two legs out and one leg in, and then one leg in and two legs out. Why don't you consider those type of terms? No, that would, uh, you can have, uh, yeah, it was just not relevant for this lowest example that we had. If you go to sufficient number of uh, loops, you can have more particles inside, yeah. But uh, because we wanted a four-point amplitude in the end, we couldn't have three internal because that would have only one outside. No, only one internal, I mean. One internal. Only having that one. It but that would be three external. No, I'm well, what do you mean? Yeah, having a product of two three-point amplitudes. Two three-point amplitudes? Yeah. But the three-point amplitude is not renormalized here, right, for us. So we are not, or, uh, okay, uh, may, maybe we should postpone that. This was the only cases that we had here, yeah. Uh, so we had four-point amplitude, five-point amplitude, then we would have six-point amplitude, which would be also relevant. We can also have that. But... Uh, because we were interested in the four-point amplitude in total, discontinuity of the four-point amplitude, then for four, the only thing that we could do with four-point amplitude was to having two internal and two external, because that was the only consistent picture. If we took three external, internal, and one external, we, were, we would be left with two-point amplitude out of it. And that would be not relevant for our calculation. Yeah, no, I, I see, but I mean the other way around. I mean, if you have two external particles on each side and only one internal leg, uh, then that would contribute to the four-point amplitude, right? It's like having a TT bar product and inserting one particle state in between. Because I, I, the way in which you take the product, I guess, is, is inserting a, a complete set of states between T and T bar, and you could have one particle state. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, that would be like, you mean like a factorization channel of a yeah, four-point exactly. amplitude? Probably you yeah. need the blackboard but, for uh, these guys. Yeah, that would uh, uh, yeah. sort it out. Okay. And, yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yaroslav. Okay. This was the, your last lesson. Yeah. So thank you.